Hey, it's Kip K for Make Magazine with another weekend project. You know, for years I used these ordinary soda bottles as platforms for fireworks. Well, today we're going to turn the tables on this soda bottle and turn it into a rocket on this week's weekend project. The Soda Bottle Rocket Project can be found in Make Volume 5 on page 76, and this project is by Steve Lodefink. Now all the parts you need to build the Soda Bottle Rocket can be found at your local home improvement store in addition to three 2-liter soda bottles. The first step is to take our half-inch PVC pipe and cut a piece about 50 inches long, which is about a pretty good height for the average person. Now after inserting the PVC pipe pretty much all the way to the bottom of the bottle, you need to make a mark about halfway on the neck of the bottle. And then I used a round file and began to file a groove into our half-inch pipe. Then taking our O-ring, the O-ring should fit firmly and pretty close to flat in the groove. Now you'll find that this is probably the most important part of this project, is to get that O-ring to have a nice tight seal but not too tight. Then we need to build the release body, which is made up of 1-inch PVC, about 4 inches long, and also a 1-inch PVC coupler. Now it's time to cut the release spring slots, and you can start by using a hacksaw to do this, and I ended up using a Dremel and cutting it large enough for our release spring. We're also going to drill three holes in the upper part of the release body for our eye bolts, and then three holes in the lower section of the release body to hold everything nice and snug. And then we'll go ahead and screw in our eye bolts. And now it's time to make the air hose connection, and this is done using a half inch end cap, and we'll drill a 3 16th inch hole right in the center of that, and then take our 3 16th inch barb fitting and press it in. Now here's a tip, use a vise for this, it works a lot better and it'll give you a nice tight fit. Using some PVC cement, we're going to go ahead and attach our end cap into our elbow fitting. And then doing the same thing, we'll attach our elbow to our launch tube. And now we need to get out our standard tire valve, and we're going to cut off one end of the tire valve, the rubber portion, which will leave two threaded ends, the end that will go into our air pump, and the other end, which is going to go into our clear acrylic tube. And here's another tip. Use a wire brush attachment and completely clean off all of the remaining rubber on the end of the tire valve. Then go ahead and press the tire valve into our clear acrylic tubing. And one more tip. Use a zip tie to hold this tight. Now taking our second water bottle, we need to cut this one up. Cut the end off, and then also cut the very top of the soda bottle off. And using soda bottle number three, we're going to cut out a big chunk of plastic, about six inches in diameter, and we're going to cut a slit in that and then shape it as a cone. Now the project calls for using music wire, but I couldn't find any, and I found that a piece of eighth inch steel worked just fine to make the retainer clip, and you have to bend that around a half inch piece of pipe. And then using a scrap piece of aluminum tubing, I cut three holes, two for the retainer clip, and then one for the string that we'll actually use to pull out the clip at launch time. Now the cone we made will go on top of the second water bottle and uh, use some epoxy to cement that on. I used five-minute epoxy, the two-part kind, and found that worked real well. Now I cut some fins out of some balsa wood, and here's a tip. I used two pieces of balsa wood and actually epoxied them together to make it a little bit thicker. And then epoxy those fins on water bottle number one, evenly spaced apart. The project calls for using a garbage bag for the parachute, but I had a dollar store tablecloth uh, that seemed to work well because it was a little bit thicker material. So after uh, help with a friend, you want to cut about a 36-inch diameter parachute out of that. And then mark some spots all the way around the parachute and cut some holes in that. Those will be the supports for your shrouds. Use reinforcement labels on both sides of the holes to make sure it doesn't tear. Now the shroud should be as long as your parachute in diameter, so in this case about 36 inches long. And go ahead and tie each of those to your reinforcement holes. Okay, we've painted our soda bottle rocket and assembled it, and now it's time to stake in our launch tube by tying string to some stakes and also to our three eye bolts at the top of our release body. Attach our air hose to the end cap, and it's time to fold up the parachute, put it inside, and then fill the water bottle about one-third up. Then we'll flip our soda bottle rocket over, over our launch tube, and securely over the O-ring, secure our retaining spring and clip, and begin pumping with our tire pump. We reached about 60 pounds and decided to test it out. Three, two, one. 
Nothing. Well, initially we found that the O-ring was way too tight. We put 60 pounds of pressure in and nothing happened. And in the meantime of fiddling with the bottle, we ended up breaking off our fins, which was a little disappointing. So we filed our groove a little bit more, made some adjustments with our O-ring, and decided to give it a test launch finless. Well, I got it. We didn't get the parachute. What happened to the parachute? Rolling. Rolling. Still no parachute. Well, we had a couple of launches with our soda bottle rocket. Uh, unfortunately, not as successful as I would have liked to see them go. And uh, of course, we also lost our fins in the process of trying to get the perfect seal uh, with our bottle rocket on our O-ring. So uh, it's time for you to build one now. And we'll see you next week with another weekend project. <laughs>